Hey guys, how's it going? So today actually we're gonna be going through the uh, La Lama pre-training uh, code and we're gonna try to understand everything. So how this will go essentially, this will be uh, probably like um, multiple series of videos whereby we're trying to cover the whole entire Lightning project. So the reason I'm doing this is that the folks at Lightning essentially have done something amazing in that um, they have uh, tried to integrate all the recent research, right? So by that, I'm, I'm referring to uh, things such as like GPTQ, like specification, LoRa, adapters, all of this stuff. So uh, what will happen today is that I'll start with this um, with this uh, pre-training uh, method in which we're going to cover like, you know, the flash attention, we're going to cover like the, the PyTorch 2.0 optimizations that they did on the scale dot product. We're going to cover that in much detail. We're going to cover through the the, 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 the positional embeddings, rotary embedding, all of the stuff. And I'm going to try both means to explain them. And we're going to explain the, the, some of the, uh, some of the distributed training techniques that the lightning folks have been using. You know, uh, I'll try to explain that and, and leave some of the references with like the in the next video already. I have covered two videos with the GPTQ. I've covered the code and the paper. And um, I think in my second video, I covered how this is applied on the Llama. So on this project, I'm just going to cover how they did it from the lightning perspective. Then we this is not done. This actually we might actually want to do this. So we might actually contribute to the project by writing this code for the specification. I already have covered the sparse GPT. It's just that we can actually uh, contribute if like no one has ever done so, um, then we can we can write this, uh, this sparse GPT algorithm. Then the project has things such as the recent fine tuning techniques like LoRa, adapters. Um, this, I'm gonna cover the research papers and the source code, and we're gonna cover also the lightning project source code and i'm going to show you how the, the folks have done it there and yeah then they have things such as text generation for all of these adapters and um uh, and the, these fine tuning techniques uh then they have these evaluation um uh, code so this is what is going to happen right this is how we're going to pretty much follow this so today however we're going to do this entire thing here so the pre-training of the llama model I'm not gonna take any shortcut. I'm gonna make sure that I explain everything in a much more depth. We're gonna look into like um, all of the, the, the entire code and try by all means to make sure that by the end of the day, you have a solid understanding of what they did. So without wasting any time, let's get into the code. So coming to the code, we have this um, uh, Lalama config class and we have these class variables. So how we can think about these is that this is a block size essentially uh, it, it represents the maximum sequence length, right? That the language model can process um, in one pass, right? Then we have the vocab size. You can think of this as more like it represents the size of the vocabulary that the last language model was trained on. So in other words, it more like um, it represents the number of unique tokens in the training set. Then we have these padded vocab size, which is going to be none. Then we have n layers. So uh, n layers, essentially how the transformer work is that each layer consists of sublayers. So these sublayers are things like attention, multi uh, perception. Then now we're gonna stack all of these and we call these blocks. And in this case, it's 32. So it's quite very, very, very huge model, right? Um, or should I say deep? Um, so we have uh, the end head. So essentially this represents the number of attention heading each at, um, transformer layer. So I'm gonna try to visualize this and I'll explain it in much detail when we get to attention. So it's called multi-head multi attention. So I'm gonna visualize visualize it for you. Um, so we have this um, an embedding. So this essentially, it represents the size of the embedding dimension in the last language model. So how you can think about this is that um, it represents the number of dimension like uh, in the vector space that represent each token in the model of a cup, right? Um, so that's what this means. So we have this. This is quite very, very important. To show you how important it is, I'm going to pull Andre Jig, uh tweet so so that I give you a better context. So it's very important to find the nearest multiple of 64 for your vocab. So he stated also here that the most dramatic optimization of Nanut's uh, GPT so far 
was to 25% speed up and it's likely to increase uh, the size from this number to this number and let us multiple of c to four this calculates at a useless dimension but also goes down a different kernel path with much higher occupancy so be careful with your um, powers of of two so yeah i think this is exactly what we're trying to achieve here i think also the folks at pytorch they they i'll go through the blog with you but they they they, they did mention this i think on their their scale dot product optimization that they did so they they they, they did actually add this and they said they also mentioned this how important it is but anyway the the, the point here is that you're going to take your vocab and if your vocab size is not divisible by 62 what you need to do essentially you're going to have to take uh, this vocab and add it with 64. Then you're gonna subtract this with the remainder of um, of the um, of this vocab size. Yeah, of this vocab size, like these two. So you're gonna do a modular between these two. Um, so it's something like, um, you're gonna take, uh, what is it? The vocab, right? You're gonna take the vocab, you're gonna add it alongside 64. Uh, then you subtract, um, you subtract the, the remainder between there. So it's going to be for cup uh, modular 64. So this is something, yeah, that is you, you do, right? And which should make sense. So it's going to make sure that this is divisible by 64. But yeah, that's that's what they did. Anyway, we have these variants of these uh, Lalama models. So this is what Facebook gave us. Um, researchers, I think. <laughs> But anyway, uh, these are all the sizes uh, that we have. So these are the varying sizes of these Lalama model. Then, now what we have, so we have this um, head. So you can think of this as it's going to become the final layer of the last language model uh, to generate the actual prediction, right? So how this works is that we're gonna pass the, the embedding. So we're gonna understand all of this, trust me then we gonna retain the vocab size so so essentially this you can think of it as like it's a linear transformation layer that will map the output right of the last language model um to a vector of of, uh, of uh, vector vocab size so the, the output should be having this dimension so the, the last dimension of the output from the last language model will be having this uh, this 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 in, uh, embedding size so we just need to map that to the vocab size some of you might be yeah but why are we doing this this is because um we want to represent the probability distribution over the vocabulary so that's how we make predictions so that's that right so if you still don't understand uh we're still gonna like i said we're gonna backtrack and when we backtrack we'll be having a better con uh, context of like what's going on between these uh blocks Anyway, we have this module list. The first thing that we're going to have is the embedding. So the embedding is going to be composed of the, of the vocab size. Uh, then we're going to have the uh, number of embeddings, right? This is what we, we're we going to be having. Uh, let me just check. I just want to make sure. Yeah. So we're going to have the, the config and the number of embedding, right? That's what we're going to have. Uh, if I continue, I'm just confused about this padded, this padded vocab size. Um, okay, yeah, this is padded vocab size, so it's still the same. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, no, I, no, I didn't, I didn't see that. Actually, we assigned it to this variable. I knew that we did this, but I just didn't see. So I was like, why? Because we assigned it to none. Okay, yeah, now it makes sense. Padded because we padded with the. Oh, yeah, definitely it makes sense. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's still our vocab, just that we padded it, you know, for speed up and nearest of, nearest of uh, 64 and stuff like that. But anyway, we, 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 we have this embedding. So you can think of here, we're going to take all the unique tokens within our vocab, then we're going to create this, um, we're going to have these dimensions. Like I said that, like I told you the meaning of, um, of like uh, having this an embedding, where is it? Uh, this an embedding. So what's going to happen is that you can think we have a batch size and we have a T, which is which is going to represent the sequence or the sentence. And for each sentence, we want to we want to uh, project this to this embed 
uh, this 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 dimension here okay so so this represents the number of dimension right in the vector space that represent each token uh, in the model vocab that's what we do so that's why here we are going to have this so now what this how will this work is that you will then give it the the sequence or the tokens that you want to process and it's going to extract those those embedding for you right so let me show you an example uh this is where we do the transformation you see here we have a we have a size so we have an input and this input we can tell that it is batch by t so it is a batch by sequence length right but we don't have we're missing something here we're missing the uh the the, the embedding of each token what we're gonna do is that we're gonna extract them from here so as you can see we're calling this uh, this thing that I just explained to you now so we're calling it and when we call it so we're gonna be having batch now by T by um, gonna be sorry batch T by it's gonna be what is it embedding right embedding dimension just like I explained to you so that's what we do here so we extracting those those dimension for those uh, tokens inside there right so that's that's like the the main uh, uh thing that is this thing is gonna do for us right so now just i'm gonna keep on writing these dimensions so that you you don't forget and um yeah and i will show you how the transformation work but now we're gonna get into the interesting thing which is the block so you know how i like to explain i like to cover the dependencies first so this way you get to understand in a much better way so what we can do is that we can go to this block so we're gonna pick track all of this will be covered in much detail all of this right so we're gonna pick track for now we want to cover this dependency so that you understand as we continue so we have this block and this block has also has dependencies on the root mean squared uh, layer normalization then we have this uh, self attention so let's start with this uh, root mean squared normalization so coming to the uh, root mean uh, square layer normalization so essentially you can think of this as it's still similar to layer normalization in which um, it's a technique that might handle the internal covariance shift um, issue in order we can stabilize the, 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 the layers activations so it's still pretty much the same objective right but now the this technique um, it tries to it's tried to use the mean squared uh, the, the, the root mean square instead of using the mean and the standard deviation of the input tensors. So the, the, the reason you seeing they using this uh, is because they, they did not state essentially, but uh, because when I go to this link, this this uh, root mean square uh, normalization, it tend to work extremely well, especially if you have like deep, uh, um, deep, deep like models. So especially in our case, we can see we have like 32 32 um, layers so looking at the at the visualization uh, it, it looks like this this um, layer normalization technique works extremely well so I know some of you might be looking for the intuition from the paper perspective so the, how, how the authors of this paper the people who came up with this technique is that they state that essentially um, the root mean squared layer normalization it focuses on like the the rescaling invariance and it regularizes the summed inputs right so so we can think of this as like it simplifies the layer normalization by removing the mean statistics but at the cost of sacrificing the invariance uh, that the mean normalization affords right so that's what i think they they also state at there but anyway what we have here we have these scaled um so these are the this is going to be the trainable scaling parameter applied to the normalization input tensor so that's why here we have the scale by these x norm and we gonna have the size so you can think of this size as a number of features or channel in the input uh tensor then we have these dimension which is minus one by default so which means that we want to transfer all the time the layer normalization we applied it across the last dimension so that's whole true right we have this epsilon which is going to be a very small number so anyway 
yeah, like as the the the, the name is it's it's it stays at itself like root mean squared. So we're gonna square these and we take the mean um across the last dimension. Then we essentially gonna apply this um these uh root root uh, uh square root uh function on this right then we're gonna uh we're gonna multiply it by this scale which is gonna be uh a trainable uh parameter that is gonna be applied to the input tensor also okay so i hope like i uh, i explain it in a much more intuitive way uh like to give you an idea why they might use this but it's pretty much at the high level i'll say like it's still layer norm still the same objective in which we're trying to stabilize our uh, layer, layer uh, activation and we're trying to improve the model convergency so it's still the same objective but in this case they're doing it differently because of um when you have deep uh, deep layers essentially these techniques hold true so yeah um anyway let's backtrack where we were i think we were here right so we understand these that okay um each so like i said that essentially each block is made up of attention and it's made up of multi-layer perceptron but before and then we call these sub layers but before each sub layer we apply these layer normalization then we have these residual connection right you're gonna see this a lot of times as you go through these uh these um open source project so i'm explaining it so that you you kind of like get used to it right but anyway that's what we have but now I'd like to explain this um, self-attention. So let's go here. So um, the first thing that we do is just to ensure that actually the embedding dimension it should be divisible by the number of head. So you will see that actually we're gonna need to divide this uh, embedding by the number of head as we as we get to the multi-head attention. So this is quite important. So um, this is another technique uh, in, in other source code. You will see that actually they try to separate these into query, key, and value. But in this case, they just batch them, So which I think is quite cool. So you can think of like we have this um, embedding dimension and we we project these to it's still the embedding dimension. It's just that the reason we have three is because of the query key and value so we're gonna extract them we're gonna separate them when we we are doing the forward pass but um uh, just to kind of like remind you of the dimension so we can think of we have uh, 40 96 then we gonna be because of we multiplying this by three i think we're gonna have six uh, what is it four four six one four four if i'm not mistaken then uh we gonna separate them uh when we do the forward pass which i'll show you but that's that's what you should you should know what we're doing here so we're taking this uh embedding dimension and we're projecting it into into this right so that's like the the attention uh then this is going to be applied uh when we're done with the attention mechanism just so that it's an output projection uh projection so uh we have to get this 496 and we're going to project it to that so that's pretty cool uh, now getting into the meaty stuff of things. So this is our input, right? So this is what we have. So we have this batch by T by C, right? And some of you might be, how do we get it? Why is it like so? So if we backtrack uh, and just, I think this is quite important. You will see that actually, this is what I explained, right? When we started. So we said that we have the B, which is batch. Um, then we have the sequence and we have the embedding then we're gonna pass it into the block, right? So I hope you understand where this dimension is coming from. Okay, um, <clears throat> then that's that. Uh, we, we we have these dimensions. Then now, this is one thing that I, I was telling you about, is that we're gonna split these things. So because of, we did them like this, so we're gonna split them because we need to calculate the attention. We need to do the dot product between query and key, so we need them separate. So here, you can think that we're taking X, which is the batch, which is uh, T and C, then the, what will the dimension be? So it's gonna be B uh, T by C. So this C, when it comes in, it comes in as 40, 90, 96, right? So it's gonna come in as 40, 96, but because of we know that we, we projected this to this six, um, 614, 44, this is what we did so essentially this here is going to give us this number here 
okay uh, then we split this so what does this mean it means that split across the last dimension so this is like a PyTorch transformation so it's quite easy to understand but essentially what it does is, is that it's going to split this um this thing here right and it's going to split it by this number of dimension so it's going to break this you can think of dividing this by four oh um nine six right so it's going to be nine six then we got three stuff so we need to get three stuff right so this is across the dimension the last dimension so this is across this so that's what the three stuff we get here so this is key um k and v right so what are the dimension of key and and, and, and key and query and v so this is going to be b t and c again right so nothing has changed it's just that now they all have the same uh the same um the same dimensions which is 4096 right so that's what they're going to do but then we have this batch and t so that's what this will be i hope i i hope you're understanding this right so this is just displayed and now we're separating them and the reason we separate them is because we need to do dot product so we need them to be separate so that we can we can do the dot product between query query and t and you know value and stuff like that so and value underscore and stuff like that but that's the intuition now getting into the multi-head so this is quite important um, and I, like I promised you, I'm going to visualize it. But for now, let's just look into this code for a second. So what we do is that we take this dimension here. So this last dimension that is inside here. So it's this 4096. So you can think of it as like we dividing it by the number of head. So what is the number of head? We said the number of head when we started was 32. So if we take um, this number, which is 4096, um, I think, then we divide that doing the integer division, we're gonna get 64, right? Hence, hence you saw like with our vocab, we made sure that it's, it should be nearest of 64 because of uh, when you're doing these matrices, it's quite important for you. So I think uh, it explains that 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 vocab in case you, you, you did not understand. But anyway, um, that's what we have, right? So we have these uh, head dimension right here, right? And we have, so this is still dimension. It's just that we broke this into just like 32, 64. That's what you can think of it. So what we do is that now we have this uh, self number of head, which is 32, and we have the head size, which is 64. So literally we still have that 4096. It's just that we broke it into 32 and 64. That's it, because if we want to have multiple contexts, that's the intuition. So, um, so that's why we're having these multiple head and small dimensions. So we had like huge dimension and we broke it down into like small pieces of 64s. And that's what we did, right? So that's what this code does. And we're using this view to do to, to that. So the batch and the and T has not changed yet. So this is this is what we have, right? And then we apply this transpose which is that we're transposing T, uh, and we're transposing T and this um, number of head, right? So we, 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 we're turning them around. So some of you might say, but why are we doing that? It's because the intuition behind this is because when you do a dot product, uh, let me write here. So when you do a dot product, essentially, you want to make sure that you do the dot product of your tokens, right? You do the dot product of your tokens um, and, uh, right the tokens also have dimensions right and then you're gonna do it across also the query right tokens and also it has dimension right so what i'm saying here is that you can't do a dot product on like number of eight it doesn't make sense because of remember that the tension the goal here is that given a token given a token, what's the relationship with another token? If I say something like um, uh, the grass, the cow, um, eight, uh, eight uh, grass or something like that, right? So I, what's the relationship between cow, cow and grass? What's right? Like, so that's what we want. We want to do this across the, the tokens and we want to understand the tokens in potency of, of each other. So now when we do a dot product we're just gonna take 
uh, we, we're going to take the, 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 the query and we're going to do a dot product. Uh, just, just use this k right dot t, which is we transpose it right. So we're doing this across the t right, which is here. Actually, this is good. So the t and this, uh, the, the, the t and this dimension right. So when we do that, because of this, the square will be transposed, we're going to be getting t by t, t by t. So this now tells us that essentially, given a token, for example, cow, what's the relationship with like grass? We have those scores, right? I hope you understand. I hope you understand like why we're doing things like transpose and why we need this. This is very important uh, for you to understand because of as you go through multiple source code, you you won't struggle when you to understand like in terms of like dimensions you will understand that because of a core understanding of like which dimension has to be processed right i know that what i've said might not make sense so the best thing i can do is to uh, walk you through some sort of like a diagram and that way you'll have a deep understanding so let's get into a diagram so um let me uh try to explain it uh in a much more uh, intuitive way and i think by visual it might make sense. So um, what do we have when we started? We said we have a batch, right? So this is just a group of like sentences. So each sentence has like tokens in it, right? So it is, you can think of this as tokens all the way, all the way down, right? So it's just like a sentence. So um, what do we have most of the time is that we have what we call positional encoding. In this case, we did not have an absolute positional encoding, uh, but in, in that other source code, you might see this, but that's because of we using rope, which we're gonna get into. But for now, just just know that. Anyway, we, we said that okay, we go into uh, essentially we're gonna take this because now we can think of here we have something like vocab, uh, we have vocab size, right? And we have some sort of like embedding, right? So we that's 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 what we have. So we just wanna take these tokens and we want to give them these embedding so you can think of like we are sampling from this token so these tokens are inside here it's just that we want to extract them with embeddings so because now we just extracted them with embedding what are we going to be getting so we're going to be getting um still going to be batch it's, good, it's still going to be the same sequence meaning the same tokens but now because of we pass them through this embedding and we, we got this embedding dimension, we're gonna be having this embedding dimension. So this is gonna be embedding, I'm uh, gonna represent it like so in this case. So this is this is what we have, this is our input, right? Now coming to the attention mechanism. So the first thing that we do is, is that we have these query and um, these uh, query and the key and value. So when we start, essentially these things here uh, have embedding dimension so they have this embedding dimension right here do we agree so this is when we start right we have been like linearly projected these input so we initialize them as like so right um embedding dimension embedding dimension right so that's what we have so inside this this here so we have these tokens inside here with this with this embedding dimension so what we need to do is that we're gonna have to linearly project these these tokens one by one, right? Into using this um, this query key and the fail. So um, what we're gonna get is that when they pass through this, when we pass them through this, is that we're gonna get a query. But this time, this query is gonna be having a batch by when when we have done it for all it's going to be batched by t by it's going to be embedded do we agree uh this is what we have right so far so this is what we have so we projected these these queries one by one for each one of them we pass them through these right and this is what we're going to get right so um uh, so this is also called linearly projection, right? Uh, so this is what we have. So this is going to be K and this is going to be V, okay? So now coming the most important concept is that we have what we call um, multi-head 
uh, multi head attention, which is one thing that we're trying to explain uh, now. So I wanna I want you to to understand it. So with multi head, essentially this dimension that you see here, we are saying that we're gonna divide this into multiple head. So in the paper, they we said we have like thirty two number of head. So this gave us like because of we had four o's ninety six. So this gave us sixty four. So you can think of now this dimension here. It's gonna be it's gonna be in multiple blocks gonna be these multiple blocks of 64 like right so we're gonna have these multiple of six multiple 64 dimensions so that's what we did so now my question will be what will then be the dimension at this point so the dimensions at this point we're still gonna have a batch we're still gonna have t but because of we divided this so we are gonna have um 32 and we're gonna have 64. Do we agree at this point? So this 32, essentially, it refers to the number of head n, which is, uh, then this is represent the dimension. So this is, this is what it means. So you, we still have, it's still the same with 4096, but you can think of like we're creating these small 64 for better context. And this is happening also across the K, right? So I hope that makes sense. And then now coming to the next step, which we're gonna code it up uh, also from uh, from scratch in a way. So what we're gonna do is that we now have to do a dot product, right, between these things, right, between these uh, small, small, small uh, sixty-four dimensions, right. But the question becomes: Are we just gonna do the dot product with this dimension? That's my question, right? Um, because remember that if you're gonna the goal what's the goal the goal is that you want like you want to understand tokens um given other tokens like what's what's the relationship here you want to understand the score right you want to you want to understand like if is this token related to this by what score that's what you want to understand but now given this dimension here is this going to be possible no it's not so what you need, where are your, where are your tokens? That's the first question. You want to tell me that your tokens are here. I hold that by T. Okay, that's good. So what you do now is that you take B, then you turn this around. So you take this N, you put it here, which is number of head, then you bring this T the side. Then you bring the dimensions are still there, right? And the question might be, why are we doing this? It's because when we do the, remember that we did the same transformation for K, right? So when we do a dot product with k, right, essentially we can do it across the last two dimensions. So we can think of k is also, we did the same thing, same transformation for k. So we can think of k also we have n, b, n, t, d. But now, when you do a dot product between these two, we're still missing something. We are missing the fact that if you want to do a dot product between here, we're gonna have to transpose this because of uh, you know how the product work. But um, the the point here is that you wanna bring this D here. I'll explain now why I'm doing this. By the way, so you wanna bring D here and you wanna bring T here. So you're doing this transformation across the last. You're doing the dot product across the last dimension. So D will cancel out with this because of that's like the matrix. So you can think we have these two matrix whereby we the first one is gonna be t by d then the second one is going to be d by t then the third product will happen here then you're left with this t so what does this mean it means that now you have information about each token importancy and this is one thing that i've been telling you t by t right that's what you have so this is what i was trying to explain all this time so you will never struggle again especially if you understand like the meaning of these dimensions and what they mean and all the time if you go through multiple source code you'll be able to know which dimension which dimension you need to do a specific transformation okay so that's what i wanted to get out of the way um but now i'm gonna code it up again and so that you solidify your understanding so let's get into the code so before we start to talk about um flash attention and the optimizations that the the, the PyTorch 2.0 did 
and all of that. So I would like to kind of like do all of the transformation that I just explained with the code so that this way, this kind of like, um, it's more like an obstruction. So it, the, the transformations that we explained, they're happening, you know, in the background. The reason PyTorch introduced this and they, they you, you're going to get a lot of speed up. This is an optimized uh, kernels. So, um, but, but before we do that, I just want to explain at the high level, um, like the, the, the tension, what's going on inside here, right? Like from a, from a transformation perspective. So um, we, 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 we said that we have some sort of like attention, right? And then this attention, essentially, we're going to be taking um, Q, Q, right? The product against um, the product against K, right? So this K, we said that we're going to transpose it because of this is our current dimension. So we just want this, um, this K T to come here because of, like I explained in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, let me just do this. I think I have a back there, uh, in the, in the, in the diagram. So this, uh, this going to be, uh, transpose, uh, transpose like so. So, uh, it's going to be transpose. Then it's going to be swapping the last, uh, the second last dimension and the last dimension. So that's what we do. These two are going to be swapped around. Um, then we're going to scale this up. Uh, so we scale this by the, by the square root of, of the K dimension. So this is going to be one, uh, divisible by mets dot square root uh, of K, um, K the size. And this is going to be uh, less dimension like so. Um, did I miss something? Yeah. Um, nope. <laughs> That's fine. But I would like to wrap this out. Anyway, that's what we did, right? So we, we pretty much have these scores. And now with these scores, we can actually apply softmax. But sometimes there's an option for you to apply um, masking. So you can apply masking. Um, and with attention, we're going to say f dot softmax, and then we going to have this, this is going to be applied across the last dimension. So, so yep, like so. Um, and we're going to have the V, which is the, actually, we're going to have this attention dot product against the V, right? So we get Y. Which is got which is gonna be attention, um, attention, right? The product what? The product v. So that's what we have here. So to explain this with better intuition, you can think of of query, right? As what I'm looking for, and this k is what I what can I offer, and this v is what I offered. So I am trying to make this as intuitive as possible, but that's what it is. But this is the transformation that I talk about from the code. That's what you can do. But that code, you don't need it anymore. Like literally now PyTorch have introduced the scale dot product, which I have to explain in much more detail. Um, so uh, so that there's certain things like, and we're gonna get into flash attention and try to understand it. But anyway, uh, before we do that, we have this, um, of this positional embedding. So this um, positional embedding is also known as like relative positional encoding. So uh, before we talk about it, I just want to say that uh, essentially the standard positional encoding uh, that is used as often in the transformer uh, code is, is the absolute positions of each token. So we use what we call absolute positions. So, but the problem uh, when I read some of the blogs and and try to understand why we needed the, the, the relative positional encoding is that the absolute position is that it, it may not be enough to capture certain patterns and dependencies that exist between um, tokens that are, uh, are not adjacent to each other. So that's why we, we needed this relative positional encoding. Um, essentially what this technique does is that it tries to encode the relative position um, 
of token in a sequence which can help to capture certain patterns and dependencies that exist between the non-adjacent token. So how it works um, <clears throat> is that it tried to compute uh, two embedding of each token. So for each token, we try to compute two embedding. One is for rotation and one is for translation. So this is with respect to the reference position, like the rope token. So that's how like the, the main idea behind it. So, right. Um, so yeah, the, the reason they include this within this, um, within this uh, query and key is because of, you know, how the attention work is that we attend to each token, um, right? So in that way, like, um, we, we can, we can, we can, we can, uh, add these positions across across the query and key because of this this transformation applies each token to another token so it makes sense for us to add them here right so uh the, 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 just for you to get a better const, uh, institution imagine if we had a token like this like token one and uh token two and uh token three like so right and token four right if we wanted this token here to have position for these other tokens, right? So what we'll do is that we'll probably have, okay, one is to one, it has a position to itself. Then one is to two, it has a position to this. So we're gonna create a matrix uh, like so. Uh, one is to three. Then we're gonna have one is to four, like, say, like so. And this is something that we will we'll probably do, right? We will have a, a very long matrix and we're gonna store these. But instead of doing it this way, how about is that we can actually encode these position within these query and key because of the attention already attends these token to one another. So we don't have to do it this way, right? Um, so yeah, I, I watched the video by Mrs. Coffee Bean and this is how she kind of like explained it somewhat. So you can check it out uh, to get a better perspective on it. Though. Anyway, um, uh, that's that's what it is. Then we have this uh, scale the product attention. So this is um, very important, and um, essentially it does what we were explaining when we were doing the transformation. But it does even more because of it is these optimized kernels. By optimized kernels, I'm referring to. Um, the first optimized kernel is going to be the flash attention paper, um, so which we're going to get into in much detail now. Then we have the, um, the second paper, which was called the self attention does not need, uh, does not need um, uh, n squared, right? So the quadratic memory uh, problem, so it does not need that. So these are the two main kernels that they introduced within this scale product. Uh, just to give you a motivation, um, I'm just gonna look for. I just so as um, as illustrated in this image, I took this image from the PyTorch block, which I will leave a link in my description below if you wanna get into the detail. But essentially, the skill the product these are the if kind of like optimized kernels that I'm talking about. This is the memory efficiency, the flash attention. Uh, then this is like the the padded vocab which we did then we have the flash attention also so we can see that the flash attention plus the padded vocab it, it's quite efficient so then using uh like the the, the 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 code that we wrote like on its own then we're not gonna get the speed up so you can see that we're coming from 150 milliseconds all the way to 80 something milliseconds so it's quite a very very uh huge boost um so hence um these these transformations um, are quite important that we're gonna do, but now your question might be, what is a flash attention, right? So let's go to the to the whiteboard and let, let me explain it to you. But at the high level, essentially, um, what I can say is that we always had like problems with uh, the quadratic memory and the quadratic compute. Um, Right, so now we are thinking of like, how can we then reduce this uh, time complexity on the memory side? Because of based on the observation, the quadratic of the compute is not as bad as the quadratic of the memory. Hence, you see a lot of people try to 
tackle the memory problem than the compute. And we have techniques such as um, uh, activation checkpointing, which try to recompute the activation in the backwards path so that we don't store them in the, uh, we don't store these activations in the forward path. So all of those type of techniques uh, have been introduced to fight the memory problem. So now I will explain what the folks at Stanford did to, to, to fight this problem in, in a very, very uh, intuitive way. And it's a very, very smart technique and very simple. Uh, so let's get into it. So um, when we work with attention, essentially we, we have what we call intermediate steps, right? So by intermediate steps, I could be talking about uh, something like dropout, I could be talking about something like masking, um, you know, like softmax, all of these um, steps that we perform um, when we conduct this attention mechanism. And when we do all of these transformation, we, 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 um, we have some sort of like results, right? And these results, they get stored in the memory. And now these essentially increase the bottleneck um of of like uh, of like the memory usage so based on this observations um they the authors ask themselves like given the, the structure of the of the gpu whereby we have um you can think of this as hbm and we have sram um right sram and we have the compute so we can think of this sram as a small memory that is close to the compute uh, but it's quite fast. Then we have this HEM, which is quite big, but not as fast as um, SRAM. So the, the HPM is gonna get the input, but the input I'm, I'm gonna be referring to them, to the key and query and value. Um, then we're gonna do the transformation within this compute and we're gonna have to um, uh, uh, send the output to the HPM, right? So the authors realized that actually this back and forth, essentially that's where the bottleneck is, right? So they asked themselves, like, how can they some sort of like exploit the asymmetric of this uh, to get the speed up, right? So the first thing that they thought about was that we can do things in blocks. So this is what is called tiling also. Then the second thing they thought because of the compute, it's, it's not necessarily a pain. Um, they ask themselves if, like, it is possible to recompute, um, to, to do some sort of like recomputation, right? So when we go into backwards force, yes, this will increase the flops, but um, but it will drastically uh, decrease the, the memory usage. So these are the two main um, ideas that they had. So, but however, this challenge comes with problems that I will have to explain. So I will explain these these uh, these techniques in much detail. But for now, I just wanna get into the main challenges. So, given that okay, we wanna do things in blocks, and we wanna do things, in, we wanna recompute things when we do our backwards pass, so that we don't store these um, intermediate results, and because of the compute is not is not a pain. So the, the pain is the memory. So that's, that's like our work around it. So the challenge now it becomes, how do we compute softmax in, in like uh, blocks, right? So is it possible to compute the softmax, right? Um, in full, like um, in, in, in blocks, because we're doing things in block. So um, I'm just gonna paste this image right here. So for you to see in a much more better way. So because of we doing things in, 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 um, in blocks, so how do we decompose this large softmax into smaller ones? So they introduced this alpha and beta parameters here, right? Um, so these, you can think of them as like, they going to allow us to get the same results as we're calculating like a full softmax. So we can, do we can calculate softmax uh, on each block, right? And then when we're done, we gonna scale them on the HPM. So we load the input from the HPM into SRAM, then we compute the attention uh, with respect to those blocks. 
then we're going to update the results uh, by scaling. By scaling, I'm referring to these, um, to these um, uh, uh, alpha and beta parameters, right? So that's like the, the, the workaround behind the problem of like uh, computing the softmax. The author also of this uh, stated that this technique uh, of like decomposing softmax into smaller ones was uh, was introduced in 2018 by a paper. So it's a it's a it's a it's a technique that has been widely used. Okay, um, that's that. Then the second technique, which is uh, not hard to understand, is that we just need to recompute. Um, we just need to do the recomputation in the backwards part in the in the backwards pass, then actually uh, storing these intermediate results when we do our forward pass. So this essentially increases the flops but decreases the the memory usage. So it was okay based on the visualization that they did that okay you know what, um, because of the computer has never been a huge bottleneck, so it's okay to increase the flops right. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave the link of the talk uh, so that you can get a much more detailed understanding of this. But essentially, these are the two main ideas that they had. So tidying, we're just doing things in block and we're breaking the input in small blocks. Then we do, we do the transformation, we apply the transformation on this compute. And this recomputation allows us not to also send the results because if we said that sending the results from SRAM to HBM is so kind of like a bottleneck so the recomputation allows us not to not to send things to the hpm all the time so um so also the the, the, the communication between the two memories is is decreased in a way so yeah that's like the kernel that i wanted to talk about i feel like it's quite interesting i'll definitely leave the link uh so that you understand it but um, and this is this is technique is quite very important and uh, it allows us to actually have uh, by the way it allows us to have like longer uh, uh, context um, sequences so you know that's quite uh, impressive so let's let's just uh, continue and look into other things so what we're going to do is that we're going to return our results um, the projected results so we can think of this uh, C projection is going to be uh, a linear projection of the embedding dimension. So it's just going to be the same embedding dimension, right? So that's that. Then, um, so this here, by the way, in case you're wondering how did we move from the uh, number of heads to back to where we were, like the, the batch uh, sentence and dimension is because of we transpose this and by doing that we resample all the heads um outputs so that's what we're going to return so um i hope what i explained made sense so i'm just going to backtrack um which is this is where we were so we apply the same layer norm again uh that we apply this the uh, uh as root mean squared um, no, layer normalization, then we have this multi-layer perceptron, which is just going to be two linear layers, uh, and this is the case. Uh, the only difference here, I'll say that we have this CLU uh, activation function. So this is this is used, it's quite smooth compared to ReLU. So it, uh, you know, like, it, it's kind of like KV, whereby you get to uh, negative one and going so it's it's unlike really everything that is um, less than zero it's going to be uh, zero so instead the seed is going to be uh, it's going to be uh, smooth so how it's it's calculated is that um, it's computed by the by the sigmoid function multiplied by its input so that's what we we do okay so yeah I think also it might be because of you know when you have deep um, deep layers these activation functions work smooth they work very well so that's another explanation probably that's why they applied it so yeah we have these um residuals connections and we return them that return the input so that's like the whole entire block and you no know, so we're gonna repeat this thing like um, 32 times right so yeah and and i'm gonna backtrack because of we we understand the block so i'm gonna backtrack to here 
so this is fine um now when we continue uh we going to come here because of this is what we did then we have we have these block because we're going to pass this input so this is the dimensions and we know that this block is expecting this dimension that's fine then we have this um ln.f which is going to be the root mean squared layer normalization because of uh we're gonna apply this across this end dimension that's fine um then we have these logits okay uh we have these logits so this is what i was explaining i was telling you about is that we're gonna project this uh this uh, uh embedding dimension to the vocab size because of the predictions and we want the probability distribution and we have this logit so that's what we're gonna return so that's pretty much what i can say this is all about um unless if i miss something but anyway this this year is gonna be let's see it's gonna be batch so we still have uh it's gonna be batch okay by the sequence length by the vocab size okay so that's what we gonna be having there so that's fine this is what we have mm. and yeah i think that's all the only thing that we can actually cover now is gonna be uh which is the most important file also it's gonna be the training uh file so let's get into it and see how it works and um, yeah so the foxit lightning are using this um fsdp strategy so you can think of this as a, it is more like a fully shattered data parallelism uh strategy so it allows us to shut the entire models across the uh, entire available gpus so we're gonna look into it more detail um then we're gonna have these checkpointing that we're gonna have to save so all the activations uh, will be saved at the specific uh, intervals as we continue to iterate. Uh, then we have these models that we covered in much detail. Um, then we have these hyperparameters here. So uh, we can think of the learning rate as more like it control how much of the weight of the model updated um, with each iteration of the optimizer, right? then we have this batch size which is you can think of it as like uh, how, how many samples right um are processed in each iteration uh, of the optimizer then we have this max eta so i think this is i'm not sure but i think it might be similar to to epoch so i think it, it's, it's just specified the maximum number of iteration that the optimizer will run for then we have the weight decay uh this is the parameter to prevent the overfeeding so we add a penalty term to the loss function so that decourage the large weight then we have these beta one and beta two i'm not sure what these are actually i'm gonna copy and uh where they you yeah they're used within this optimizer so uh, these are basically parameters to control the exponential decay rate uh for the first and second i think first and second momentum of gradients so uh they're used to adjust the momentum of the optimizers so yeah i think they can have a significant impact on the convergency behavior then we have this gradient leap so um yeah this is one of the well-known popular techniques also that we use to prevent the gradient from becoming too large so uh if they become too large, this can cause numerical instabilities during training. So we use this uh, gradient clipping. Um, then getting into this strategy here. So um, this strategy essentially was introduced by PyTorch. So what you will see is that actually I think I'm going to make a different video to cover these uh, tr distributed training techniques like from this speed stage one stage two uh, all of these stuff and i think i might cover all the research papers but here this was a technique that was um strategy that was introduced by pytorch i think the folks at lightning have integrated it uh inside here but before i explain this you can think of like we have like uh, uh what is it uh, data distributed strategy whereby 
what we do is that we're gonna replicate all the model, right? We, we don't like uh, shard anything. We just like take the model the way it is. We put it in the GPU, another GPU, just like that. Then we have like this batch of data, which is gonna be sent to these di di distributed model. So the problem with this strategy, like is that it suffer from the fact that if we have a large model, then we can't necessarily, it can't fit in one GPU. So we need to shut the model. So what this technique does is that um, it allows us to shard the model and its optimizers um, so uh, across like multiple GPUs. So this way it becomes much more scalable for you to train um, these models, right? So um, <clears throat> that's what it means. I'll leave the link to this, but I think I'll have to cover these distributed training strategy and the research papers in much more detail. Then, yeah, um, we have precision, which is going to be BF16. Also, this is one of the things that is quite important. I need to cover these things. I think I'll have to create a video. So yeah, you can get like uh, uh, 3x speed up by just using um, a 16-bit uh, floating point. Uh, so it's quite one of those techniques which are quite uh, very important to use um, the yeah, I think that's that. Uh, so we have this data set, by the way, uh, which we're gonna load. So in this case, we have this data set that is coming from Shakespeare. And as we can see, I'm just gonna go to the script. There's these files here, prepare uh, red pajama. So red pajama is one of the open sources that have um, data cleaning, uh, code, all of that for kind of like training on open source data set. So that's pretty cool. Actually, I'll have to cover this also. Uh, I'll have to cover their open source project so that you guys get to see actually how like uh, these large language models are trained on um, open source data set or web data set, something like that. But anyway, um, where where were we we were here right so we we have these get batch and get data set and we have this uh evaluate so we're going to evaluate our model so uh some of these things i think they are self-explanatory but anyway um we're gonna pass all of these things the optimizers training set and val data that we get from these load data set uh, then this is going to be the optimizer that we initialized here. Then the model is going to be coming from the uh, Lalama config model that we defined in the previous code, right? Um, then we're going to start this while loop in which we're going to start the training. This is where we get the batch of the data and we pass this data inside this model. And I think in the model, we were retaining the loss, right? Uh, yes, this is this is the logit. So based on these logits, then we're gonna calculate the loss, right? So that's what this model was retaining. So we have the loss here. So yeah, then we have these backwards pass and we update the weight. And um, that's what it is to this, right? So I feel like uh, if you are into ML, deep learning, this code uh, might look quite um, straightforward. Uh, but yeah, that's what we do. Uh, you know, um, this is this is all it is to this. So I, I just before we finish, I just want to show you uh, a block that I think I should recommend. Uh, let me do that. So I wanted to share this block uh, from the Patches Lightning. Uh, so essentially, this block is quite important. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Um, because it covers these strategies for distributed training. Uh, and I think I'm gonna cover these in much detail also, like cover the research papers from Deep Zero strategy, whereby we try to offload some of these optimizers to the CPU. And yeah, all of these stuff, I, I think are quite interesting, but I'll leave a link uh, so that you guys can check them out. So this is like Deep Speed 01. We share the optimizer states. Here we share the states and the um, gradients um, yeah so this is the offload everything to the CPU uh, so quite a, quite interesting uh, techniques to be honest then we have these deep speed activation checkpointing 
So, which is quite cool. Um, techniques such as, um, what is it? Um, mixed precision, mixed uh, precision. Uh, these are quite important technique, especially if you're doing uh, pre-training. Um, so I'll, I'll definitely have to cover these and so that you guys can uh, learn about some of these techniques. Uh, but yeah, um, I'll leave a link so that you can get a high level overview of understanding of how they work and that will be fine. Uh, other than that, I think that's all we have um, we covered. So in the next video, as promised, I'll make sure that I cover uh, the adapters. I think that's the most important thing, which is I'll cover the paper one, paper two, and the source code. Then we're going to cover the source code from the lightning folks so that we get to uh, have a deep understanding. So thanks. I'll see you in the next one.